Hello, my name is Aron Horvat. Today I will talk to you about one common mistake that you can make when you call a virtual function from a constructor. You will see how that can turn into a full bug. And then you will see what you can do to avoid the need to call a virtual function ever from inside a constructor of a class. If you like what you learn from this video, please subscribe to my channel, don't forget to tick the bell if you want to receive notifications. And if you really want to learn about programming, watch my video courses published at Pluralsight and Udemy. Watch my latest video course, Beginning Object Oriented Programming with C Sharp, published at Udemy. Use the link from the description to get a large discount. Alright, straight to the topic calling a virtual function from the constructor, why that is bad, how that can turn into a bug, and what you can do to avoid making that mistake. So we'll start from the base class, which has some state on it, initialized through the constructor, there's nothing special so far. Define the derived class, derive it from the base class, and the compiler complains because we must initialize the inherited state through the constructor in every class, including the derived class. All right, I will want to see these objects, initialize them with two pieces of state which differ, instantiate one and the other, print them out, run the application, and there is nothing special so far, the application works fine. And now things become more complex. We might add more state to the base class, but such that we cannot just initialize it, it must be calculated. The base class might want to allow the derived class to calculate this state differently, so we might introduce a virtual protected function which does the calculation in the base class and call it from the constructor. That leaves to the derived class to override the calculation with whatever it wants. And here the troubles begin, because the derived class might want to use the state of the object to calculate the value. You see already where this is heading. I will print the calculated state out run the application, and here, the derived class is using the uninitialized state. It is using the state before it was initialized in the base class. And that can get even worse. We could add a dependency, an object. Mind, it is a reference type. Initialize it through the constructor, do the same in the derived class. And then the derived class wants to use the dependency as well in this calculation. Here, it is the referencing the dependency, but the dependency reference has not been initialized yet, and it is a null at the point where the derived class is using it. So if I passed some object, a non-null object, obviously, and run the application, there will still be the null reference exception because the derived class is using the dependency before it was initialized in the base. Even if we survived the null reference exception, there was division by zero just around the corner waiting for us. So this, this approach is generally flawed. We could try to work around it. One attempt is to pass arguments to the virtual function. But you see, that is defeating the purpose of the object state. Why hold values both in the state and in the function arguments? That doesn't make much sense. I will give up this attempt, delete it. Second, second attempt is to just call virtual function last. Well, that is not generally applicable because some other part of the state might depend on the result, so you cannot call the, the function last definitely. There could be two virtual functions. Which comes first if you want to call both? How do you decide the order? 
Well, the order should depend on, on the implementation in the derived class, and you still don't know that. So this is a cheap workaround that will sometimes save you. That it's not generally good, and it's definitely not good in every situation. Let's just give up working around. Let's solve the problem once and for all. So the application seems to be working fine, but this is definitely not a general solution to the problem. From this point on, I will show you the way how you can remove a call to a virtual function entirely. I will introduce a protected constructor that receives even the calculated field, everything, because the purpose of the constructor is to initialize the object, to set the entire state. And this is the constructor which is doing precisely that. Just set the state. The first constructor will call this one, but apply its calculation there. This is the place where you do the calculation as the base class is seeing it. But I want to make it impossible for the derived class to call this constructor. So I will turn it into a static factory. So there will be no constructor that receives two parameters. And look, we don't need the virtual function anymore. So we have removed the need for the virtual function. I will change the way the, the object is instantiated above, and now we move to the derived class. We must do the calculation here. And whatever the derived class wanted, this is the place to do it. It has all the arguments, the dependency, the state, so it can use them right here to complete the calculation. It could even call some function it wants that is de defined on the derived class, but that is there, and it would have to pass the dependency in state to it because it is quite obvious that at this point, the state is not initialized in the object and cannot be used. So you are avoiding the bug, the defect of accessing an uninitialized state of the object by design. You don't have the state. Remove the virtual function, and that is it. This is the alternative design, which is avoiding the need for virtual functions and avoiding any pitfalls associated with it. I will run the application and it will work fine. So this is the complete design. Both base and derived classes are completed. The derived class is overriding base classes calculation, but without traditional overriding and without the need for a virtual function. Use this design to avoid virtual functions called from the constructor. And with that, avoid future bugs. I hope you liked what you have learned in this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and watch my video courses at Plural Site and Udemy. Thank you for watching and see you soon.